Thanks for tuning in to Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting in Seoul. Typhoon Chaba has moved away from Korea and is no longer a tropical system. But in the southern part of the country and Jeju Island, at least seven deaths have been attributed to the storm and three people are missing. Cleanup and repair work is underway as the damage reports come in, already to the tune of some $18 million. Hwang Ho-jun has our top story. It took less than a day for Chaba, named after a tropical flower, to ravage the southern coast of Korea. According to the safety ministry, seven fatalities are confirmed so far, and three people are still missing. The death toll includes a firefighter who was swept away by the currents while on a rescue operation in Ulsan. More than 200,000 households lost power, though it was mostly restored by Thursday morning. Chaba also devastated about 9,300 hectares of farmland, nearly 30 times the area of New York Central Park. The storm also inundated 508 houses, forcing about 200 people to evacuate. They're now taking refuge at local schools and community centers. Thousands of vehicles are reported to have sustained severe water damage due to the flooding. The typhoon has also taken a toll on local industry. Two Hyundai Motor plants in Ulsan and 20 other industrial facilities in the area were forced to suspend operations for a while on Wednesday due to flooding. The General Insurance Association of Korea said more than 18 million U.S. dollars worth of damage claims were made directly after the storm swept over the coastal area. The total economic loss is still being calculated as the reports roll in. Thousands of private, public and military recovery support staff have been deployed in restoration and aid work in the affected areas. The government said it will come up with a detailed restoration plan by the end of this month. Hwang Wojun, Arirang News. A job fair is underway in Seoul to, pa to pair young people looking for work with startups fostered by the government's creative economy policies. President Park geun spoke at the opening ceremony highlighting the importance of getting passionate young people into the workforce and pledged the government's full support to create jobs for them. Song ji has more. Korea's network of 17 innovation centers is bearing fruit, and the startups launched at the centers are now actively hunting for new hires. The businesses appeared at a youth job fair held Thursday at COEX Convention Center in Seoul, alongside 350 other startups and small and mid-sized companies. Our wearable devices, which allow the wearer to hear sounds from smart devices through vibrations that emanate through the fingers, has already attracted $1.5 million from a crowdfunding campaign. As our product is also attracting global interest, we're aiming to hire five more people at this job fair to be in charge of international sales and marketing. <laughs> President Park geun speaking at the event she initiated, also highlighted innovation and creation as key concepts for growth and entrepreneurship. The government has also vowed to provide young job seekers with customized programs offering everything from career counseling to job training, while also encouraging startups to explore new markets with new industries. President Buck also vowed to use a creative economy and cultural prosperity initiatives in conjunction with labor reform, restructuring and deregulation to create quality jobs for the nation's young people. Song Ji-sun, Arirang News. The Korean government and other public sector entities plan to use nearly 9 billion U.S. dollars in extra spending by the end of the year to revive the country's economy and minimize the fallout from downside risks at home and abroad. 
The government says it'll inject an additional $5.2 billion, with the rest to come from organizations like the Korea Electric Power Corporation. As for the extra spending it had already planned for the fourth quarter, the government says it'll work to implement it swiftly. Despite some positive effects seen from that supplementary budget for the second half, the government sees growing uncertainties caused by multiple factors, including the Hanjin shipping crisis, walkouts by auto and railway workers, and the corporate restructuring drive. The opposition and ruling parties are feuding again, this time over suspicions of corruption at two privately funded foundations that were set up by the government. During the ongoing parliamentary audit on Thursday, the ruling's Henry party revived its boycott of some parliamentary committees, objecting to a witness opposition lawmakers wanted to call. The opposition is demanding to hear from Che sun Shil, a woman with personal ties to President Park Geun-hye and who was reportedly involved in the creation and management of both the Mir and the K-Sports foundations. The controversy over the foundations was reignited by the recent news that the, that the Federation of Korean Industries wants to disband them and create a new one by merging the two. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. More to come on News Center in two hours' time. Bye for now.